We're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we begin, as we always begin, trusting Allah with the results that we aim for. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our efforts and our deeds be acceptable to him, inshallah. In that order, dear Muslims, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness that knows no limits, his mercy that knows no limits, and his guidance. For if he guides us, none can lead us astray. But if he does not guide us, then none can guide us aright. Our religion, my dear brothers and sisters, our religion, its complete expression is al-Islam. Al-Islam is the complete expression of our religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, astajibu lillahi wa lil rasuli, idha da'akum lima yuhyikum, wa amlallamu, inna, inna Allah, يَحُلُّ بَيْنَ مَرْئِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَإِنَّهُ إِلَيْكَ تُشْرُونَ تُشْرُونَ He says, O you who believe, O you who have faith, respond to Allah and His Messenger. Respond to Allah and His Messenger. When He calls you to that which gives you life, يُحْيِيكُمْ he calls you to that which gives you life. And know that Allah becomes, he, be, he comes between the human being and their hearts. And that it is he to whom you shall be gathered. It is he to whom you shall be gathered. My dear believing brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam our religion is a call to life. It's a call to life. Alhamdulillah, we have just completed just really a few days ago the blessed month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. And we, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are still in the mode of Ramadan, still experiencing the sweetness of the month of Ramadan, even though we are beyond it now, alhamdulillah. But we also have experienced a call. Ramadan was a call to us to really enliven us and to enrich our lives again upon the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to become more familiar with our religion, to become more uh, attentive to our religion and our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remind you as I remind myself, do not let this wane. Don't let this go away. Because we are beyond the days of Ramadan, don't, don't, don't revert back to, to maybe bad habits and to old ways that take us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us guard against that, inshallah. Amen. Amen. But, Allah, but our religion, my dear brothers and sisters, is a call to life. Hayya, life. Even the Mu'addin, when he made the call, he says, Hayya ala salai, come alive to prayer and to worship. It's hayya ala al come alive, alive and upon success and cultivation. Upon success and cultivation, we are to become alive to things. We, we, our prayer, our dua, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us to, to die, let things in us die. The Ramadan, that was no good for us. He, he, he put them to bed, put them to rest. And he enlivened in us a spirit to hold the Quran. A spirit to live Islam in a way that would be pleasing unto him. A way that would be a model to the world itself. A model to the world itself. Islam is not selfish. Wherever Islam and the Quran was, was present, authentically present, 
I'm, I didn't say I didn't say wherever Muslims were. I said wherever Islam and the Quran was authentically present, wherever that that place, that space, that land, that city, that town improved. It advanced. It evolved. Just look in history. Don't trust me. Go look in history. When the Quran came and it was present, the, the, the environment that it, it went it in, it improved it. If people were living a low, a low status of life, once the Quran took in that time, they began to rise up. There were people who were steeped in darkness and ignorance who became interested in science and technology and literature. And philosophy and math and mathematics. And they created systems, the same ones who were steeped into ignorance and darkness and backwards life. They were they came alive to the Quran and it sparked something in them that changed them forever. And we still read about their contributions today here from a historical perspective. We still read about them contributions that they have made, that they have left. This is the result of the Quran being present. This is the result of, of this al Islam being authentically taught and lived amongst the people. So we don't have to go too far to see the quality of Islam that's being lived, we just look and see, is, is, the, is your neighborhood improving? Is your community advancing? Is misery being reduced in society and, and, and vitality being infused into the society? There are telltale signs that Islam is present. And one of those signs is that things are advancing. Things are improving. If your life is exactly the way it was one year ago, as it is today, then something is wrong with your perception of Islam. If your prayer is the same as it was a year ago, that something's wrong with your perception of Islam. Things should be advancing. Things should be progressing. It's a telltale sign. So you, we don't have to look very far. Just look within yourself. Look at, look at the quality of your life. Look at the places where Muslims occupy. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about us. We're having an intimate conversation about us right now. Why? Because we just came out of the month of Ramadan and we, we should be situated uh, uh, in a really strong way right now. So we're talking to us, about us. Our religion invites us to success and away from death and misery. There, was, there should be distinguishing characteristics between the believer, the faithful believer in Islam and those who don't have what we have. We should be able to have a distinguishing characteristics. And one of those characteristics, one of them, there are many, there are many, but one of them is that we live intelligently. We have good common sense. We live, we live logically. There, there's an there's a order about how we go about life. There are systems and there are patterns and there are consistencies that is present when one just observes us. They just observe. They're looking and observing and they're seeing. I see how they interact. I see how they go. I see how they build their families. I see how they go about educating themselves. I see how they build their business. I see how they support one another. I see how diverse they are, yet they're all brothers and sisters. However, if we cannot distinguish our interaction, our human interactions from those who don't have what we have, 
then that's an indictment upon the quality of our, in our relationship to the Quran and to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah protect us from this, inshallah. The Quran says that the believers, they're known by their marks. Read your Quran. He says they are known by their marks. Now some, some may, may reduce this to say, well, you know, it's the, it's the mark of their prostration. When they prostrate, they have, they have this mark. Well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. If, if, if that's, you know, if we want to stay in elementary school and, 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 and that's, that's the level of your understanding, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right? But to say they're known by their, they're known by their distinctions. They're known by their distinctions. They're, they're known by the, the, mark, the, 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 the indicators that they leave in the world. So they're known by their marks. What mark are you leaving? What's the mark that you're leaving? What's the indicator that, that you're that you holding the Quran, that you possess it? What's, what's your indicator? What's your proof? What's the evidence? There should be evidence. There should be evidence. Yes. There should be distinguishing characteristics. And one of them, perhaps a very important one of them, is that we live intelligently. And we have good common sense. Even our acts of worship that we do, there are reasonings behind them. There are thoughtful ways that we can talk about them. And we should be able to express our life to others who don't have what we have in the way that makes good sense to them. If there's good in them, it will touch them. If it is not, then Allah is handling them. He's dealing with them. Allah says in the Quran, it says when the, when the ignorant approach you, you say peace. You don't war with them unless they war with you. No need to, to, to take up arms and be an aggressor. He said, when they approach you with something, you say peace. Read your book. Read your Quran. These are the characteristics. He said that when the, he, he spoke of the believers, when, it, when that's what happens, how we interact in the world. We're not so drawn away where we can be distracted. They'll come and they will put out something so outlandish something so far away from us, something so, just, just to distract us, and sometimes we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll give in to it. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be triggered by that thing. And it'll be just a distraction. But the believer, they said, we're not distracted. We said, peace. And we keep going. Wa ma lakum and what cause have you not to believe in Allah? And what cause have you not to believe in Allah? Allah's at, he's, he's questioning us. Like, 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 like for, upon what reasoning do you not have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the messenger, he invites you to believe in your Lord. And he has indeed taken your covenant. He's taken the covenant. You know what a covenant it is? A covenant is, is an agreement. It's an agreement. It's, it's actually stronger than an agreement. It, it's, a, it's a binding agreement. It's a binding agreement. So when we accept Islam, we accept a binding agreement. It's more than just a handshake. It's more than just, a, I got you. It's more than that. It's a binding agreement to live in a certain way, to hold ourselves to a certain standard, to live in, a, in a accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our abilities. 
It's a, it's a binding covenant. It's not just inshallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah. It's, it's not just some external dress that we might wear or some title that we might hold. It is a binding covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Islamic life is. It's a binding covenant. Like you should be you obligated. And you're not obligated in a way when someone's over you threatening you. You obligated out of a dutifulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't want to, to disrupt your relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hold myself accountable. I hold myself accountable to this binding covenant that we have. And part of that covenant is to be intelligent. It's to be intelligent. Whatever the best way to do a thing, whatever the most intelligent way to do a thing, whatever the most efficient way to do something, whatever the, whatever the way is that will yield the most benefit to the most people, Islam supports it. These are characteristics in Islam. So I don't have to tell you this or that or this small. I don't, I don't have to get into the way I ask you, is it intelligent? Is it efficient? Does it violate any of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do the people benefit from it? Then you should be about that business. You should be about that work. You should be about that commitment. We're known by our marks. We're known by our marks. Dear believers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us leave our mark in this world, inshallah. Amen. And help those marks be a witness to our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, Amen. and in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is he, he is the one who sends signs to his servants. Huwa alladhi yunazilu ala al-abdihi. Ayad. He sends signs upon his servants. He sends us signs, dear Muslims. That means there will be occurrences, things that will be happening in the world. And we don't look at things the way that other people look at things. We don't look at occurrences the way other people look at occurrences. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, surely in the heavens and in the earth and in yourselves are signs for those who would just think about them. Just think about it. So we look at what's happening in the world. We look what's happening on the streets. We look what's happening in our communities. We look at what's happening among ourselves and there are signs. And all signs point to al-Islam is the way. All signs point to our adherence to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he has given to us and prescribed to us as a life, is our measure for success. So I don't care how much money you have or how much status you have. All those things are subject. Those are transient. Alhamdulillah. And I ask, if you have money, then do good with it. If you have education, then do good with it. If you have a status, you have some influence in the land, do good with it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But there are corrupt people who have money. There are corrupt people who are very educated, very intelligent, but they are corrupt. They're immoral. We don't want to be like them. We're known by our marks. We're known by our marks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we know it or not, whether we can perceive it or not, things are happening according to his will. We are, we, we are res, we resigned upon that. Allah says nothing happens except by his permission. 
Nothing happens except by his permission. So when we're when we living life and we're experiencing things, whatever these things might be, you understand that nothing happens except that by Allah's permission. This makes us, this has us a level of acceptance, a level of contentment that happens within us that we're willing to accept whatever the day brings. Whatever the day brings. Yes. Because if I take on the day, if I take on the challenges of the day, I'm speaking to you as a believer now, as a believer in Muhammad, as a believer in the Quran, as a believer in Islam. If I take on the challenges of the day and I fail, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's the will of God. If I take on the challenge of the day and I'm successful, alhamdulillah, my disposition does not change. Circumstances change. But my commitment to Allah and his mess does not change. Allah mentions those in the Quran in my conclusion. He mentions those who, he says when, I'm paraphrasing. It's like when, when times are good, you see them praying. You see them devout. devout. When times are good, they, they, they alhamdulillah and mashallah all day long. He said, but when some, adversis, when some adversity touches them, when, when a little adversity touches them, they lose their minds. It unravels their for why? Because, because Al-Islam hadn't taken in them yet. It hadn't taken in them. It, it's, it's not a foundation upon them. It's surface. It's just on the surface. And when you have surface level religion, the winds of the world are going to come. They're going to blow. They're going to blow you off that. They're going to test you. They're going to test that, inshallah. They're going to test that, alhamdulillah. I'm talking about just that, the, 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 the verbal expression of it. They're going to, they're going to see if, if it's in here. Yes, the winds of the world is going to come and it's going to shake you off of that if, it's, if it has not taken in us. And then there are those, God says, he gives us a picture of them. Being out on, a, out on a ship or on a boat. And the waters is raging. And they didn't think that they would make it. So they called upon Allah pleading in sincerity and desperate. Deliver us. Deliver me. And Allah says, and, and when he delivered them to, back to safety and dry land. They acted as though they never called upon Allah. They acted as though they never called upon Allah. So we have these pictures of extremes. When people are good and when times are bad. But for the believer, the faithful believer, our disposition does not change. You have to know this. You have to be resolved upon this. And you have to be prepared to be tested upon this. Allah says in the Quran, do they, do they think that they can say that they believe and not be tested? <laughs> do, they be, do they think they can just confess, I have faith, I believe. And not be tested? He said, those before you were tested. Yes. And he tests, he says, to separate those who are real from those who are not. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us pass the test, inshallah. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be resolved upon his message. 
of his book, the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us have better relationships with one, other, one another, to protect our families, our children, our future. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to all that is good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us good friendships. We ask Allah to give us good associations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us join together with other people who want to do good work. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the evil within our own selves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us continue to benefit from the blessed month of Ramadan. Amen.